But first, let's talk about Bernie's massive, incredible, stunning, beautiful democracy affirming landslide win in Nevada where he crushed the corporate and oligarch and hack competition. Here's Bernie's team, a little bit of celebration that they put out. So Senator Sanders, you're gonna run for president. I am going to run for president, that's correct. It's gonna be different this time. We're gonna win. We have begun the political revolution and now we're gonna complete it. As NBC News projects Bernie Sanders, the winner in Nevada. I think there is a realistic shot that he could win the Democratic nomination. Do not underestimate Bernie Sanders. You can tell how good I feel by how nervous the establishment <laughs> is getting. Senator Bernie Sanders held the largest campaign rally of the presidential primary season so far. Senator Bernie Sanders has a clear and growing national lead. The reason that we won tonight is because of the hard work of so many volunteers. We need a social movement. I think Bernie Sanders understands that more than any other candidate. You know what? They should be getting nervous. Let's win the Democratic nomination. Let's defeat Donald Trump and let us transform America and create a government that works for all, not just the few. All right. And therefore, I just I just wanted to say that to if you haven't yet get out there, contribute if you can volunteer, knock on doors, text for Bernie, make calls for Bernie. That's how this is going to happen in the summer and, of course, defeating Donald Trump in November. And in order to do this and what we saw in Nevada was a major defeat for the politics of a delusion. And let's talk about the three delusions that they've tried to hit Bernie Sanders with. And we'll be talking, of course, about uh, Cuba later and the various other nonsense and garbage and embarrassing takes that the Bloomberg campaign and others uh, will attempt uh, to launch at Sanders in the movement. But we saw right before Nevada, the three delusions, Russia, bros and Medicare for all. Let's start with Russia. Russia is a topic that many people know that I haven't spent a great deal of time on. And I maintain the position that if you want to get to the bigger problem about election interference and undermining democracy, you have to deal with Mike Bloomberg. You have to deal with plutocracy. You have to deal with oligarchy. You have to deal with how social media platforms and public propaganda can be manipulated by anyone. And if you want to talk about the international dimension, you have to address U.S. foreign interference as well. This is not to deny that there aren't Russian foreign policy aims. That would be naive to do. But the bigger takeaway, and where folks like Greenwald are right, is that this is primarily a rhetorical strategy, a narrative strategy. Russia is now deployed now from the establishment against anyone that might upset that very establishment. So anytime there is, as an example, a surging candidacy, for decency, democracy, and justice in this country, as represented by Bernie Sanders, all of a sudden we hear uh, speculations and mutterings around Russia. Never mind the fact, by the way, that even just strategically, why would a petro state like Russia want the candidate with by far the most aggressive green and ecology plan? That doesn't make a great deal of sense. This came out, though, of a broader failure of the Democratic establishment, corporate America and Hillary Clinton to accept why they lost in 2016. And this is irrelevant to Russia's role in the campaign. Let's be very clear about this. We don't have to deny that there might have been some links between Trump and Russia that may have been illegal, that may have been inappropriate. We don't have to deny that there weren't Russian, uh, Russian bots or whatever. If you think that that is why Hillary Clinton blew that election and Donald Trump is president. You're denying the entirety of American history as well as the unique and fundamental crisis that we find ourselves in now produced over the last several decades. It's a head in the ground, xenophobic and delusional strategy. And folks who criticize Russiagate have always been fundamentally right about the narrative problem. This is Bernie Sanders responding uh, quite accurately and with a lot of swag uh, to the Russia story before the Nevada vote. Thanks very ago, much. How do, you, how do you think it came out now? If you had the briefing a month ago. Well, I'll let you guess about one day before the Iowa, the uh, Nevada caucus. Why do you think it came out? No. Was the Washington Post? Good friends. 
<laughs> Swag. That's definitely Biggie Bernie right there. Washington narrative became an e- the Russian narrative became an easy way to avoid reflection on the state of the country and actually addressing the crises we're in. Now it's being used against the Bernie Sanders movements by hacks who claim that the most popular Democratic campaign is not authentic, but the work of Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. Then, of course, we have the Bernie bros. And this is the same tired, exhausted narrative. Actually, people were reminding us that this was used against Barack Obama during Hillary Clinton's xenophobic uh, pre-Trumpian campaign against him designed by Mark Penn in 2008 Democratic primary. This is obscene and stupid on a number of levels. One, of course, it literally erases the fact that by far Bernie Sanders' campaign is the most multiracial, most multi-base. He won, I believe, as of now, 70% of the Latino vote in Nevada. So you're immediately stating a lie and getting rid of the vast bulk of what's driving the Bernie Sanders campaign and vote. And that makes sense because it's a working class campaign, which is represented by everybody. That makes a lot of sense if you take 10 seconds to think about it. The other point here is that bros are good. Bernie bros are good. It's awesome that there are young bros or whatever that want people to have health care that are willing to aggressively advocate for their candidate. Toxic online behavior. It's funny for me as someone who talks a lot about the vampire castle and all sorts of other things that I think are extremely unhealthy online, sometimes specifically manifesting on the left. If you want to have a conversation about that, let's do it. You want to have a conversation about how capitalist models of social media platforms incentivize toxic behavior. I'm all for it. But this is not a product of one campaign, period. Anybody who could look at some of the stuff that you see from the K-Hive as an example, I think. <laughs> it's <laughs> what happens when democracy uh, uh, meets the internet. It's what happens when democracy and capitalism and a highly modified, modified technology that incentivizes personal uh, certain behavior sets, you know, meets the internet. So we can have that real conversation. It is stunning and mind-blowing and offensive and sickening and delusional and embarrassing that people who will defend Joe Biden's crime bill, who will ask you to listen to Mike Bloomberg's road to Damascus at exactly the moment he's running to for president apologies for running apartheid style policies on young men of color in New York City, that they can fixate on people critiquing them online. There's a whole rhetoric, which I'm done with, as everybody knows, rhetoric about privilege and fragility and all this stuff. I don't think it's useful for selling a bigger case. Uh, But wow, wow. To actually be out in the public sphere, apologizing and advocating for violent policies, whether it means depriving people of healthcare, violently policing certain communities. And of course, not a second to be thought about what the U.S. footprint across the globe is, but to be whining incessantly because somebody might know more, know something that you don't on Twitter, or you get made fun of for doing an embarrassing tantrum like Chris Matthews. This is insane. It's the Bernie bro narrative is of course cynical and dishonest and ridiculous, but it is a product of such mental emotional decline and such barbaric entitlement of the American elite that it actually does become something too important to talk about. Because if you're leveling that charge, you are almost certainly revealing yourself as being in an utter state of delusion, decline, and rot. And as I always say at the end of uh, this talk, Bernie bros, of course, ridiculous term to describe the largest coalition in American politics, but also thanks bros. Keep tweeting bros. Medicare for all. The the establishment linked leadership of the culinary union attempted to fear monger about the idea of every single American having full high quality health insurance. Well, you know who rejected that fear mongering? 
the actual rank and file members of the union membership because they care about not only themselves having good health care, but their friends, their family, and their neighbors. They're driven by justice and decency. And oh, whoa, shock of all shocks, their actual concern about the material well-being of their fellow workers and citizens also overrode the Bernie bros who tweeted mean things at the culinary union. If you shared that press release from the culinary union unironically, I I can't even put into words how embarrassed you should be. The rank and file cared about actual things. That's why they came out and caucused for Bernie Sanders. We all know that unions no longer having to spend their time negotiating health care means that they can fight for higher wages. Here's the good news. As much as the elites and centrists are stuck in the politics of delusion, working class America is not. The decision of culinary workers in Nevada to go against their union leadership and come out overwhelmingly for Sanders shows that. The politics of delusion is losing its grip and its proponents are lashing out at the realization that they aren't in control anymore. People want health care, livable wages, an end to kids in cages, and a systemic fight against the global ecological crisis. The politics of delusion fundamentally come from a place of peer fear. The politics of not me, us, is about courage, and it's winning. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.